Hello and welcome to the intermediate course brought to you by World Chess. When the position is equally balanced after coming out of the opening, the struggle to gain the initiative starts. The side who can gain an advantage is the one who can take the lead in the game. There are different ways in which to take the initiative. In this course, we will focus on the most common ones. Taking the initiative. Maneuvering in order to improve and activate one of several pieces. That can be slow, but efficient as well. It does require a high level of tactical skill. Keep this important question in mind. Which pieces should or could I improve and how? Threatening by putting pressure on the opponent's weaknesses. By gaining pace, making intermediate moves, one side can gain a strong initiative. Making a pawn break can create new opportunities, new lines, squares, or even new tactical possibilities. This can change the nature and the dynamic of the whole position. Be aware of the pawn structure to find the potential pawn breaks. Makarichev and Kolmov in the URS Championship of 1983. Black has the bishop pair, and his heavy pieces, the queen and the rooks, don't look very active. How do you improve the position of these pieces? Rook e1. Rook takes e1. Queen takes e1. And queen b8. A great move. The queen is heading to an active square on the a7 g1 diagonal, also giving space to the a8 rook, which will be able to head to e8 on an open file. The pin on the d4 knight makes white unable to avoid this idea. Queen f2, queen b7, an important intermediate move that gives space for the rook to activate, but also forces the white queen to come to the defense of the d5 pawn. It no longer protects the e1 square. Queen f3, rook e8. Now white can't contest the e-file. Black is already better. Rook d1, queen b6, king f1, and queen c5. In only five moves, black significantly improved the position of his pieces and made white's position very passive. The game is obviously not over, but black's prospects are way better, and he managed to convert the advantage 12 moves later. The next game is between Zuckertort and Steinitz from the World Championship in 1886. The middle game is starting. Black has a slight developmental advantage because white still needs to castle. White advanced his c-pawn to c5, which is too far. This takes some space, but also gives a breaking point. It's usually the opponent's pawns that show where a pawn break can happen. Rook f to b8. Preparing the pawn break b7 to b6 to open the queen side. Rook a to b8 would have left the a5 pawn weak. Castles. b6. C takes b6, knight takes b6, knight takes b6, and rook takes b6. The queen is under attack, so white is losing an important tempo, as he can't coordinate his pieces well. Queen c3, queen b7. Another important tempo. Thanks to the opening of the b-file with the pawn break, black keeps improving his pieces while white has defended. It's the same strategy as in the previous example with the exact same move. Queen b7. Right after seizing the initiative, it's important to keep causing problems by creating threats or attacking weaknesses. Rook d1, queen b6, king f1, and queen c5. With this second pawn break, black keeps and increases his initiative by opening the lines and squares. All these pieces are going to activate while white is uncoordinated. Besides, we can notice that black gets rid of the c6 backward pawn and wants to trade with the most active white pawn. Black has a decisive advantage. Thank you for watching this video. And next up, we'll take a deeper look at peace trades and recaptures. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you soon.